Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bone show. Where have you been? I've looked for you forever and a day. Where have you been? I'm just not myself when you're away. Welcome to The Rock Interview. I'm thrilled to have on Grammy Award winning, CMA Award winning, a host of many things, so many jobs, and so talented, <laughs> Kathy Matea. <laughs> Thanks for Hi, coming Eric. on the show. Thanks for having me. You know what? You just always sound amazing. I was telling you before we even did the show, what I, what I love about your voice, Kathy, is I can always recognize it on, on all of your songs and obviously the huge amount of hits, 30 songs in Billboard. Uh, oh, you know, wow. Well, thank you. And thank you. It's funny, you know, sometimes I'll be out, you know, shopping or something in public and people don't always recognize me because I'm going blonde. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but... <laughs> And, um, but as soon as I speak, people are like, I know you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a gift to have a voice that people recognize. It really is, particularly, I think, in this day and age to where, you know, there are a lot of artists that kind of sound alike. I like it when I can go, hey, I know her voice. Yeah. You know, and speaking of which, uh, you know, I, I saw you on the CMA Awards. Yes. And I saw you on Ken Burns special. Yes. And I saw you on the Bluebird film. Yes. Is there anything else that you could be involved in recently? <laughs> You know, it's, it's like a, a oh, resurgence. Oh, it was crazy. I, I keep telling people that this past fall I had three part-time jobs, <laughs> and, and that was one of them. One of them was just, you know, running around the country with Ken Burns talking about country music, which was just a thrill, you know, just a but, thrill. But what an amazing uh, documentary to be a part of, and with you consulting on it, and it was interesting, too, that one of your early jobs here in Nashville was working at the Country Music Hall of Fame. Yeah. So did that kind of help you with that background? Well, it's interesting. They sort of baited me into opening the show, which was something I didn't know was going to happen, but they were talking about this painting that Thomas Hart Benton did of the sources of country music. And so they got me talking about it. And then the first time I got to see a screening of the whole thing, they kind of warned me and said, look, uh, you're the first thing we see. I couldn't figure out what my part would be in that. So that was, that was you know, it, it was just a, a thrill and uh, getting to be part of it from the beginning and seeing the first edit all the way through. Oh, yeah. There was a day when um, Hank Williams died in the morning and Patsy Cline died in the afternoon, and that was a really hard day. <laughs> when you watch two episodes a day, it was so intense. And he is so, uh, I mean, when he turns his lens onto mm. your world, right. it's, it's an honor to begin with and then to see the finished product. It's I thought every amazing. episode was so powerful yeah. and then uh, obviously the Ken Burns effect to where all of these artists that maybe hadn't gotten airplay or been on Spotify everybody got boosted yes I had a like a top 30 record on the country charts on iTunes the next day after the last episode aired and I just walked around laughing all day long I was like <laughs> it was just so I thought about country music but I never thought that it might how it would affect me right and so I was just like gig it was like having a secret all day long like washing the dishes <laughs> ha, ha, ha. I mean oh I'm in the top 30 <laughs> well, you know, and, and I'll tell you what was so great to me about those episodes which each one of them was just a gem is that I learned something that I didn't know you know and, and yes. particularly like yourself to where it's like going okay Hey, we think we know a lot about this. No, Ken finds something else, like the the hidden things. I'm like going, oh, like I the didn't know Johnny that. Cash uh, home movies that right. were found in somebody's garage. And and the other thing that he does so beautifully is, he gets people telling the story who were there. Right. And so it's not like looking at pictures you know you've seen over the years. Mm -hmm. It's all it's kind of a, a fresh point of view to a history that you think you know. So there's always some nuance to right. take with you. Which I love. Speaking of which, you know, besides you know your tour and besides Pretty Bird, great album, um, you've also been doing a radio show. I have. I've been helping out. Uh, there's a radio show in my hometown called uh, it's it's called uh, Mountain Stage. And I call it Prairie Home Companion with Hillbillies. That's kind of my <laughs> point of view about it. And it's been going for 35 years. And Larry Gross is the host. And they asked me if I would come in and do some guest hosting to give him a little bit of a break. Look at you. And do. so it's been a new uh, skill set. And lots of old friends are on the show. And right. then I've also been discovering all these new youngins that are making amazing music and like melding together electronic and acoustic music or right. bluegrass and pop music. And uh, it's you know, David Bromberg walks in and says, hey, I can't believe we've never met. Do you want to sing a duet with me? And I'm like, yes, yes, 
Absolutely. But it's so incredible, though, too, because particularly, you know, how you came up through Nashville as a singer, songwriter and everything and, and made your career. Now you're helping out other young artists and everything. come Because as you and I both know, it's hard to get attention. It's hard to get radio play, TV time, anything. Particularly yeah. as a new artist. This show is important. Uh, it's been on public radio, like I said, for 35 years. And they, they let people play whatever they want. They don't wow. edit anything. They let, them, let everyone be themselves. But they're just all about giving people a place right. to be and to be seen. And not always the most mainstream thing. So they have this kind of cult following that's developed over the wow. years. And, uh, you know, because media is getting more and more fragmented Definitely. shows like this are getting more and more important yeah and and i think once you have a niche like that too people seek them out exactly you know you're going to hear something that's yeah. going to challenge you and spark you and that you might not hear anywhere else mm -hmm. speaking of the amazing song that you opened up with where have you been uh 30th anniversary of that the 30th anniversary of that song i can't it's it's hard to take that in sometimes. and and you know and to me that's always been a touching song to me and I did not know the backstory mm. from your husband mm -hmm. as one of the uh, co-writers of it yes. with his grandmother. John Vesner is my husband, and he wrote this song with Don Henry. We always like to say that because he swears he would never have written it had Don not been in the room. Because <laughs> uh, they're both genius songwriters. But um, it's a true story about John's grandma and the last words she ever said. And she was in the hospital. And he uh, went in the, the same hospital on a different floor. And she had been in for a long time. She fell out of bed and broke her hip, and so they kept her for a while. And she lost her grounding in her life. She, right. she was out of familiar territory for so long that she didn't recognize anybody. And she just quit talking finally and quit eating. Oh and gosh. it was John that went and got his grandfather and wheeled him in, mm -hmm. brought him up in the wheelchair from the other floor. And she said it was completely different and that, you know, she just looked at him right, like, the whole time that he mm -hmm. healed him in. And she said, she kept looking at him, and she did say, where have you been? But it actually, years, just a few years ago, he said, well, that's not exactly how it happened. <laughs> she didn't look up and go, where have you been? Right. She looked up and went, where have you been? <laughs> she was, like, mad. Right. It's like, you should have been here <laughs> yeah, sooner. Exactly. I've been stuck in this hospital. Come on. And then he said, you know, I just don't think that it would have been the same if we did this song that way. So. Well, what a great song, because I think so many of us have been in those situations with loved ones. I know me with my grandmother going through Alzheimer's, and it just touches you. I mean, every time I hear it, you know, and, and you deliver it so well. Thank you. And it's just powerful. Well, the song sings itself. My job is just to get out of the way. <laughs> and interestingly, you know, these are the gifts of getting to live with songs for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I initially sang the song, and I was thinking of John's grandmother. Then my mom gets Alzheimer's. So, I, you know, the song had a completely different meaning. And, mm -hmm. and then over the years, people come and tell me their story right. about their parent or their grandparent or something that happened. And so, you know, you, the song begins to be a touchstone for all of this life experience right. that we have in common. It's just amazing. Well, I want to make sure that our viewers know where to find you yes. with your tour this year, with your hosting, with all of your jobs, Kathy. Where can they find you? <laughs> um, my website is Matea.com, and my Facebook is Kathy Matea Music. I'm pretty easy to find. And is there going to be some more new music maybe coming out in the next uh, year or so? Perhaps. This is, a, this is another one of the projects that we are thinking about. <laughs> in between radio hosting and uh, CMA Awards hosting and being oh, in, yes. in documentaries of every kind. It's it, good. Uh, you can't complain. It's a good thing. Uh, or at I'm least they're asking you about things I know about, which right. is great, you know. And, and you have a beautiful guitar to accompany you yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I'll tell you what, I'm, uh, Pretty, Pretty Bird is such a great album. If you haven't bought it or downloaded it yet, I highly recommend it. All the songs are just so well crafted. Also, still the Greatest Hits album, which had a resurgence thanks to Ken yes. Burns. And uh, pick up a copy of that or download the songs. But go see her live. You're really going to enjoy it. And you can hear her on our own radio show as well. <laughs> it is Kathy Matea. Thanks for watching The Rock Interview. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a body bone show.